definitely excited to be heading out here in the next few minutes to go check out the Greenlandic ice sheet. This is pretty much the massive ice cap that covers Greenland. So the only other place you'll find something like this on that scale is Antarctica. We'll have some time to go walk out on the ice as well. So sounds like a blast. I am definitely glad I booked it. It was pricey-ish, not too bad. It was about 110 Canadian dollars. So 80, 90 US, somewhere in there. All right, I just got picked up in this massive, massive, ice machine basically huge ice bus kind of like the ones they have at columbia ice field in canada and yeah i guess we're gonna go pick up 20 people for this tour so popular day all right we are headed out to the ice sheet we just left town and it is a rough road i can see why they're using this specialty vehicle wow So there are some trees here, which is unusual. None of it has no trees. So there are some trees here in Greenland. So there is some amazing mountainous scenery right here. A little ridge. We're going uphill at this point. And the river's still pretty thawed. Just great landscapes here. Crazy. sense of just how huge this fjord is and the sun is pretty low in the sky given the higher latitudes here so this is the massive massive truck that i am riding across the terrain here towards the Greenlandic ice sheet, which is about 20 kilometers east of Kangerlussuaq on these very rough roads. They need a lot of traction to get up and down on these slippery roads. So he is installing chains right now as we speak in preparation for our arrival at the Greenlandic ice sheet, which is not too far away at this point. This is gonna be incredible. I'm really happy to be here. And the guy is so nice, he offered to have me sit in the very front seat here of the truck so I can film without any obstruction, the beautiful, beautiful landscapes of Western Greenland. Beautiful place. To say that I'm excited to be here is an understatement. It is absolutely gorgeous here and I'm enjoying every minute. I'm gonna go check out these two lakes over here. Just idyllic, so beautiful. And it's not cold at all. It's like minus five, maybe minus eight, but no wind, so you don't really feel it. I am a Canadian though, so that probably helps cold tolerance, I suppose. So incredibly untouched lakes here, just about 10 kilometers or so from Kangalusak. Looks like there's a boat down there making its way across. I'm not sure what the story is with that, maybe fishing. But yeah, gorgeous Arctic landscapes here. And it's definitely deep snow and I probably should have brought boots on this trip. Hiking shoes it is, they'll get wet, but I guess I'll dry them. At least the heating inside of the lodge should be enough to dry out these shoes overnight. It looks like he's just getting finished now, putting those chains on the machine and then we'll be on our way again. It's pretty much just as mountainous as the Baffin region of Nunavut, the Kikutani region, and which makes sense considering it's directly across the Davis Strait. So given the number of times that I've almost slipped today, I uh, probably was wise to invest in the travel insurance in the Copenhagen airport before I left. Uh, you never know, I suppose. I actually wish that I wasn't wearing these transitions glasses because um, it's getting a bit dark out, even though it's not that dark. But got no in between right now. I'm forced to wear sunglasses, so that's always a downer. Beautiful scenery though, you can see these towering mountains just all around. It is absolutely incredible. So you can see that this road hugs this lakeside really closely. It is a wild ride out of Kangalusak to get out here. Beautiful though. It's pretty much just a rough trail. So this is the Russell Glacier. Beautiful. It's gonna be a bit shaky because I can't get it on the gimbal, but you get the idea. Very, very beautiful glacier. All right, it's a bumpy ride, but the gimbal is helping a little bit. 
these roads are unreal. You do need chains for sure. They go up and down pretty significantly around here. It's actually a feat of engineering to build something like this all the way out to the ice field. So I just saw some reindeer. They're a little bit hard to see. They don't get really close to the road, but um, my zoom lens on my DSLR at least picked up a few. All right, we're going up this ridge now and we should be at the ice sheet. I just saw a little glimpse of it through the gap in the ridge, but we are almost there. These roads are incredibly bad. Wow, look at that ice, crazy. As far as the eye can see, right in front of us. That is the Greenlandic ice sheet, wow. Wow, we are just teetering on the edge of this cliff now. So cool, it's way higher than I thought it would be actually. That is just outstanding. So you can see it is sheer ice here. And we are approaching the other tour bus right now. That's the 11 o'clock tour. At the edge of this moraine, we're gonna cross and make our way down to the ice. Pretty amazing, every direction. He was delayed just a little bit getting those chains on. There was a bit of a mechanical issue with them. So uh, we only have 30 minutes, he tells us, at the ice, usually there's an hour. But anything is better than nothing, so. But I guess the views from the top, just endless ice in every direction, so cool. This is well worth the experience. It's a little bit of sketchy road though. Wow, it's endless ice. So cool, literally, pardon the pun. It's pretty amazing that I was able to jump right off the airplane, drop my bag off at the hotel and be here with such ease. Seamless transition, so cool. I'm gonna get the drone in the air, I think. It's too amazing not to. So apart from all the footsteps, it is so still and calm up here. It's a very slippery surface. Some people here are wearing like flats with no grip, so man, I feel sorry for them, but at least I'm wearing hiking shoes. Not as much grip as my, you know, heavy duty winter hiking boots, but yeah, they'll do. So I'm a little bit bummed out that I didn't get down to the ice itself, but hopefully that drone footage actually exists and I was able to catch it. Not too sure about that though. It was giving me low temperature alarms and the drone was about to shut down. So I really couldn't fly for too long and I didn't make it down to the ice itself, but that's okay. The view is amazing from here and uh, they just don't have the time. As you can see, it's, it's getting dark at this point. So he doesn't want to drive back on these roads. Uh, past dark, of course. It is what it is. You roll with the punches in the Arctic. It's number one rule. I do envy the people that got to go down there, though. And now it's a matter of how to get down without falling. Easier said than done. So the guide was just telling me he's been here 4,000 times. And he even brought the king of the Netherlands here. Very cool. I am a little bit bummed out that I didn't get to actually walk on the ice, but I guess this is close enough. But uh, yeah, I might never live that down. Got to come back at some point, I guess. Whew. Yeah, the only unfortunate part that's a good tour, unfortunate part is that if they run into any delay, it uh, does cut into your time a little bit. It takes an age to get out here too. So it's mostly driving, but the views are amazing. But you do get to hike out to the ice, um, in theory. My footwear is actually pretty poor for this little endeavor. If I ever came back, or to any of you that are watching, definitely bring really heavy duty hiking boots, uh, preferably even with, you know, ice cleats or something like that to not fall. Because it's definitely a pretty, pretty icy trail there. There's a lot of uphill inclines, so. I could see many injuries happening here. So we are heading down now from this massive moraine. That's right on the edge of the ice sheet and we are heading back to Kangarlusuak. 
You can still see the ice sheet there on the left. It just goes on forever. That's a massive cliff of ice there. So cool. And you can see this road is even more fun on the way back. Oh my goodness. Huge, huge ruts. All right, we're at another rest stop here. Beautiful views overlooking this glacier. You can see the blue ice right there in the distance. If you're not into snow and ice though, this is probably not the location for you. But beautiful if you do appreciate winter scenery. We're gonna make some uh, hot drinks here for us now. So I haven't had hot chocolate in, oh my goodness, years, I'd say. But uh, yeah, pretty nice to enjoy this out here. But it's really good too. He made it really well. So I talked to uh, some of the other tour goers here and uh, I asked them about what I missed out on at the ice sheet. So there was, a, I guess, a flat part of, you know, kind of sheer ice with some mud uh, and little crevices basically, but uh, no deep crevices. They didn't take anybody anywhere that would be really, you know, sketchy or dangerous or, you know, you have a 30 foot drop into the ice. Um, it was more just a flat kind of pond surface they showed me pictures of. Um, so just to the edge. So nobody really went far. So I feel a little bit better about that given that, you know, they didn't go extensively explore the ice sheet. They just kind of, you know, left the shoreline, if you want to call it that, walked a few meters onto the ice. So would I recommend the tour? Yes, but I would probably say take the 11 a.m because it gets dark so quickly this time of year, especially, you know, anytime after like October 1st, it's the days are shorter, or September 21st, I guess. Leaving early in the day would give you a little bit more daylight. The driver doesn't feel as rushed to get back. So you're likely gonna have a bit better of an experience if you take the morning tour. I took the afternoon just because of my flight time. It is what it is, but uh, the driver, you can tell, is feeling a bit stressed that, you know, the sun's setting and it took him a long time to get the chains on this vehicle. So uh, we were probably out there for 30 minutes and that slowed us down. So, you know, that cuts into your time on the ice. So just be aware if you do take the tour, it is expensive. You know, you're paying about a hundred bucks, give or take US for the tour. You do expect to be on the ice a long time, maybe an hour. I was expecting probably about an hour, but it was more like 25, 30 minutes before we had to go back. And I, again, I spent a lot of that flying the drone, but that was my choice. But, uh, you know, just talking to the other people on the tour, uh, people did feel rushed, of course, and uh, they would have liked more time out there, of course. So it is what it is. You gotta roll with the punches, you gotta be flexible. So just keep that in mind. Um, it's expensive, but the views are amazing. If you wanna get out of Kangalusuak and you wanna explore the land and really delve deeper into the heart of Greenland, it's worth it even for the drive in and of itself and for the amazing view of that ice sheet once you get to it. So pretty crazy like you can see right behind me. Just incredible sights here in Greenland. All right, back on board, we're heading back. I am back in Kangaluswak at the old camp and that was a cool tour and man they did push the darkness it is pretty well past dusk at this point it's basically civil twilight it looks like a plane is coming in I'm not sure where that's coming from but one of the prop jets that ply their way around the skies of Greenland it's kind of cool uh, Air Greenland actually has a fleet of helicopters as well so on the smaller hops, I suppose, between some of the smaller communities, especially when the distances are really close together, they use helicopters and connect all the communities here, most of them at least, in Greenland. Really cool. These are cheap cities to fly to, so Kangalusuak, Ilulisset, Nuuk, and Sisimiut 
are all quite cheap. You can get flights for about $200 or so US one way, so not too bad. If you agree to the fly and sleep promotion, which is you have to stay overnight in Kangerlussak like I'm doing, then you get that flight for 200 bucks and the onward ticket uh, to your next community. It can be Ilulissat, it can be Newark or Sisimiut. Anywhere else though, it's about double the price. So Copenhagen to, let's say, um, I think it's called Kakortok on the southern coast is like, I don't know, four or $500 one way. And then if you go to like really far north communities, like there's one community that's almost near the Thule Air Force Base, really far north of Greenland, that is like $1,000 to 1500 one way. So insane. So you can definitely do a lot worse than the old camp here in Kangerlussuaq. I've really enjoyed, you know, this small little room, little tiny bed. And uh, yeah, I'm basically spending time just uploading my Instagram stories, prepared myself a little meal. They um, also provide free tea and coffee. So got myself a licorice tea on the house free of charge, which I plan on tucking into later. So good, you know, level of service they have here. They have a lot of amenities that you wouldn't expect in a property that's this cheap, especially breakfast tomorrow. Breakfast is expensive in Denmark, so for it to be included in a $61 room, it's pretty incredible. So this property is actually quite far from the nearest restaurant, and it would take me about three kilometers of walking or so to the airport restaurant, but um, I did have some leftover bread and cold cuts, uh, beer leftover from the plane, so got myself a little dinner. But otherwise, pretty lazy night here in Kangalusuak. It's really warm too with this nice furnace right next to me, so you cannot go wrong here. All right, well, it is just about 7.15 a.m. or so, and I am at the Kangalusuak airport right now. So there's a pretty bad storm, I guess, that hit the Greenlandic coast over the evening hours. And it's sleeting pretty bad here, so it's quite slippery. All the flights to Newark, which I'm not going to, going there on a boat, uh, are cancelled today. So there's a lot of angry people. But I am going to Ilulissat, which is the coastal uh, ice fjord further north into Greenland past the Arctic Circle. So I'm just walking over to the Polar Lodge to get breakfast. Uh, my flight's not cancelled yet. I hope it continues to be the case. There's about three or four more chances to fly today. Otherwise, I only get one day there, so we'll see how this goes. All right, free breakfast at the hostel. So I'm just walking back now from the Polar Lodge, and you can see just beautiful ridge here in Kangalusuak. And there's good hiking. If you want to hike up to the top of this ridge, you get great views of the runway and the fjord. But this is the small town of Kangalusuak, and that is the little airport. And it's really weird. It's not marked as an airport. And honestly, if I was walking by it, it would look like a health center or, you know, some sort of, I'm not sure, like an office building. So it doesn't really appear to be an airport at first glance. There's no real signage on it that I could see. But in any case, Kangalusuak, Greenland. I'll be back here on Thursday of next week. So in six days, I'll fly back in the afternoon, ending my time in Greenland here, and then connecting back to Copenhagen. And this is the Kangerlussuaq city bus. So it makes a loop around the community, which is quite a weird community in some ways. It's kind of a road on the north end of the runway and a road along the south end of the runway. So it kind of curves around the airport, but uh, it is pretty widespread. It would be like five kilometers, six kilometers altogether. So it's good they have a bus to connect the town. Anyway, I'm gonna go see if this flight leaves today. It is slippery, I've almost wiped out a few times, so gotta be extra careful. All right, let's do this. Very small airport. And it gets light really, really late here. So it didn't get light out like you see now until about nine o'clock. So it's very dark in the mornings here. All right, so there's a little gift shop in the airport. They also have one of the most popular restaurants, and I guess the cheapest restaurant in town 
is this airport cafeteria, which is open evenings as well for dinner. So I haven't eaten here because I had my own dinner last night, but uh, you can see they do have a breakfast buffet. But she says that my flight is okay. It's going to leave today, so the weather's cleared up there, so I'm good to go. All right, the flight is boarding now. So there's the plane right there. Small turboprop will take me up to Ilulissa. That's the furthest north I'll be going in Greenland, and I'll be spending the next two days there. Welcome to Ilulissat. It is snowing like mad right now. Crazy. Definitely worse weather than Kangalusuak. And it's really slippery. Uh, that said, I hope that I get to do a ice fjord cruise here. I mean, the visibility sucks right now, so definitely not gonna do it today. But I hope this clears up for my sightseeing sake at least. Otherwise, I'll be seeing them through fog.